tonight on First at 9, this Tuesday, the 20th of August 2024. Reducing energy costs. MOU signed with India for the infrastructure development and supply of LNG to the Sobadanavi power plant. Regulating election expenditure. Election Commission gazettes the maximum amount that can be spent on a single voter. Candidates are legally bound to submit an expenditure report 21 days following the announcement of results. Election promises. SJB Sajid vows to eradicate poverty in Sri Lanka. NPP's Anura promises to maintain rural peace. SLPP's Namal asserts that protecting human capital is crucial. Dalit accepts presidential debate invitation. Obey Vishwasi Dino Sinsurain, then Langamati Pharmacy in Labagat Hacker. From Ada Derana, this is Ada Derana First at Nine. Live from Studio 24 in Colombo. Good evening and welcome to tonight's edition of Other Than a First at Nine. I'm Tarindu Mahendra, joining you live with the latest in Sri Lanka and from around the world. Now in your top story tonight, pursuant to the provisions of the Regulation of Election Expenditure Act, the Election Commission has limited the campaign expenditure for the 2024 presidential election to a maximum of 1.8 billion rupees. Accordingly, each presidential candidate will be permitted to spend a maximum maximum of 109 rupees on each of the country's voters. Pursuant to the provisions of the Regulation of Election Expenditure Act No. 3 of 2023, which will be enforced from this year's presidential election onwards, the maximum sum of money each candidate can spend per voter must be published in the Government Gazette within five days of accepting nominations. During the meeting that was held last Saturday between the Election Commission, the presidential candidates and their representatives to reach a consensus on the maximum amount to be spent on a voter, sums ranging from 50 cents to 1,000 rupees were proposed. Following consultations with the presidential candidates and political parties, the Election Commission published an extraordinary gazette notification setting the maximum sum of money a candidate can spend per voter at 109 rupees. Accordingly, the candidates' campaign expenses have been limited to 1,868,298,586 rupees. 60% of this amount or 1,120,979,150 rupees and 60 cents can be expended by a candidate for propaganda activities while the remaining 40 percent amounting to 747 million 319 thousand 424 rupees and 40 cents can be spent by the secretary of the recognized political party or other political party or the elector who nominated the candidate Candidates are required to submit an election expenditure report to the Election Commission within 21 days of the election results being declared. The report must include expenditure on media activities, radio and television programs, news bulletins, magazines, periodicals, social media, digital exposures or any other digital media or publications and supply of fuel for vehicles and must include bills of payment. Additionally, if the services were obtained free of charge, the name, the national identity card number and address of the person who provided the particular service or donation must be included in the report. However, the report is not required to include expenses incurred for transport costs of the candidate or costs on stationery, telephone charges or any other communication mode. The notification added that failure to submit the reports before the stipulated date and submission of defective reports are offences that that will be subject to penalties stipulated in the Presidential Elections Act No. 15 of 1981. The Executive Director of the People's Action for Free and Fair Elections, Rohan Heti Arachi, commented on the limitation of election expenditure, which is being enforced for the first time during this year's presidential election. 
Within 21 days of the election results being proclaimed, candidates must submit a report disclosing all donations and contributions received in cash or kind, stating whether they are donations, loans, advances or deposits, as well as the details of the donor or contributor. If a candidate fails to submit their report within the stipulated period, submits a defective report or exceeds the expenditure limit, that will result in a 100,000 rupee fine, dismissal from their position and disenfranchisement and being barred from contesting future elections for three years. Meanwhile, the Election Commission commented on the ongoing preparations ahead of the presidential polls. Official poll cards are currently being printed. The Postal Department has taken steps to deliver the poll cards to electors' residences by the beginning of next month. Additionally, the Postal Department has taken the necessary measures to deliver postal ballots, residences of the electors who applied for postal voting on the 26th of this month. We received 736,589 postal voting applications. Out of those, 24,268 applications were rejected. Accordingly, 712,321 electors are eligible for postal voting for this year's election. Horizon Campus 2024 Intake 2. Register now. Crunchy goodness for hunger on the go. Presidential candidate of the summer Gujana Balavege, opposition leader Sajid Premadasa says that a new poverty eradication program will be implemented in future with the cooperative movement at its heart. Addressing an event today, the leader of the opposition stressed that the need to modernize the country's cooperative sector and highlighted that digital banking systems should be introduced to cooperative banks. A cooperative industry and trade convention was held this afternoon in Colombo under the patronage of Samagajana Balavega's presidential candidate, opposition leader Sajid Premadasa. During the event, opposition leader Premadasa signed an agreement with the cooperative leaders representing the nine provinces. <laughs> A crucial factor in our party's economic policies is the cooperative. In 2019, we launched the Shakti Sahal Cooperative Initiative. During that season, we were able to secure 3.5 or 4% of the market. However, unfortunately, the newly elected government decided to put an end to this initiative a week after coming into power. Following that, the industry was once again passed on to the private sector. This also led to the closure of small and medium scale rice mills, and currently, the price of rice has shot up to nearly 300 rupees per kilogram. We have decided to reinstate the Shakti Sahal campaign in the country once again. Shakti Sahal it is crucial that we modernize the country's cooperative sector. Similarly, the cooperative banks should also be formalized. A digital banking system should be introduced as well. Former President Ranasinghe Premadasa introduced the Janasavya program to reduce poverty in Sri Lanka. The cooperative sector of the country was directly involved in this program to distribute dry rations to the poor. We will introduce a modernized program to eliminate poverty in the country and assist the poor. I hope to launch this program under the new government which will be in place following the elections. Similar to the Premadasa era, where the cooperative sector played a major role in the country, we will once again strengthen the country's cooperative sector through our modern program to eliminate poverty from Sri Lanka. We further assure that under our governance, the cooperative sector of the country will reach great height. I affirm that the cooperative sector is safe and that my team and myself will accept the responsibility of safeguarding it. Crunchy goodness for hunger on the go. The presidential candidate and leader of the National People's Power, Anura Kumar Adisa Naika, vowed that his party's divisional councils will work to protect the peace in rural areas of the country after the presidential election. The NPP presidential candidate made those remarks during a rally in Galgamur. 
Another rally of the National People's Power's presidential campaign was held today in Galgamur under the patronage of the party's presidential candidate Anura Kumar Disanayaka. <laughs> So far, the presidency was held by sons of wealthy families. All of you are gathered here to contribute towards the victory of a son of a farmer, not a son of an aristocrat. All of us should get together on the 21st of next month in casting our votes at the polling booth in favour of Anura Kumara Disanayake in order to make him victorious on the following day. <laughs> Mika Mukad, Apera Ta Pala Nekarapu Pala Ken Vising Hadapu Prasnaya. The leaders of our country do not want the rural population to be economically sound. Back then, Ranil Vikrama Singh secured power by promising the people that an automobile assembly plant will be established. However, in the end, he is only distributing 10 kilograms of rice. Because of this, we should establish a government that make this country wealthy. We have established divisional councils in rural areas. Now we are utilizing those councils for election campaign. After these elections, our divisional councils will work to keep the peace in those rural areas. Why should the rural population and quarrel among themselves. We should end that era. We should also rally people who didn't exercise their franchise if we are to develop the country. Sri Lanka Podu Jana Perimuna presidential candidate Namal Rajapaksa highlighted the importance of making policy decisions aimed at protecting Sri Lanka's human capital. Speaking to media following a discussion with representatives of the Government Medical Officers Association, the SLPP presidential candidate confirmed that former President Gotabe Rajapaksa is included in the party's future programs. Sri Lanka Pudujana Perimuna's presidential candidate Namal Rajapaksa met with officials of the Government Medical Officers Association at the GMOA headquarters today and engaged in a discussion. Bagaimana tamai jenata awal langkat asa ya ayat na boleh tak hilang ya ayat asa yang kan di mana tulah seperti bishala abu dia kaya ke setran pelipat tu laba ganu pulau. Mereka tu wajib setra saburti kya araksha kiri ma sandha api pratipatti me tiindu katiu tuhi. Manusia sampatra kaya ganu wajib tiindu tiernya katiu tuhi. Nama terakhir pas datang hari pekan tamai bayangkan ada ni. Abu tu mana mana kau mana pelak dek. Nah, wajah kata awam mati betul tak ni? Ini meh, desa pan lebih di kawe. Nuh, karena kia nuh, bayi ding awasan. Ini sielu ma peksa kaya ngi pratipati diha balat tamai janata awa. Chandra dene he mana tuh? Eh, ayeke pasubi mawat. Kohen dha mukad dekina karena mata ni. Dengan orang orang di desa pan lagam, kita buat jana dekini gorda beraja pan se. Bayi di kawe nang warga nabal. Eh, tuh apa hadili ma pe pada pilu leh tu lino. Presidential candidate of the Sarvajana Balaya, Dilit Jayavira, has accepted the invitation from the People's Action for Free and Fair Elections to participate in a debate with all mainstream presidential candidates. Meanwhile, Sarvajana Balaya executive member MP Gavindu Kumaratunga stated that Dilit Jayavira has become the most impactful candidate in this year's presidential election. Presidential candidate of the Sarvajana Balaya, Dilit Jayavira, has accepted an invitation from the People's Action for Free and Fair Elections to participate in a public debate. The debate is being organized to provide presidential candidates with an opportunity to present their policies to the public. The People's Action for Free and Fair Elections, also known as PREFRAL, has also invited President Ranil Vikramasinghe, Sajid Premadasa, Anur Kumar Dzhanayake, Namal Rajapaksa and P. Aryanetran. In a letter, presidential candidate Dilit Jayavira stated that the opportunity for each candidate to present their policies will be a new experience for the country's voters. He also expressed his hope that other candidates will accept the invitation to participate in the debate. Meanwhile, executive member of the Sarvajana Balaya Political Alliance, Gavindu Kumar Tunga, stated that Dilit Jayavira is the most impactful candidate in this year's presidential election. 
संबंधिंग कथा करने को टे। In a backdrop where the opposition leader is speaking about one million entrepreneurs, Ranil Vikramasinghe is following the concept of Sri Lanka can, and the NPP has changed their party policies because of us. I feel like our party and our party's candidate have already become a challenge to the other political parties in the coming election. The symbol star has already become the symbol of hope that directs the country towards the correct path. Should we hand over the country's power to a group of people who don't have personal opinions but steal others? Words, or should we hand over the country's future to a leader who has done his own research on the development of other nations and who has a set of policies to develop our country? The voters should think wisely prior to casting their votes. For more of the latest, join us on the other side. Star dishwash belly till indul pass when say they star dishwash magic topica. Welcome back. In your business news, the Colombo boss closed in red today as a result of price losses in counters such as LOLC Finance, National Development Bank and Brown's Investments with turnover crossing 580 million rupees. The benchmark all share index closed at 0.08% lower at 11,494.61 points, while the S&P Sri Lanka 20 fell 0.02% to close at 3,300.16 points. Meanwhile, trading volume on the SPI fell to 21.2 million shares from the 30.8 in the previous session. The capital goods sector was the top contributor to the market turnover, while the banking sector came in second. High net worth and institutional investor participation was noted in John Keel's holdings, Melster Corp and TJ Lanka, while mixed interest was observed in Ceylon Tobacco Company, Aitken Spence and Hatton National Bank. Foreign investors closed as net buyers, purchasing stocks worth 47.8 million rupees, while domestic investors were net sellers, purchasing shares worth 514.4 million rupees. Senior analyst of Capital Alliance Dilushka Dimel joins us now with a few thoughts to round off our Market Scene View segment for the week. The All Share Price Index increased by 1.8% from 11,303 points to 11,504 points, while the S&P 20 also rose 2.4% to close at 3,300 points. Market turnover shot up by 32% to 3.7 billion rupees last week, amidst higher crossings made during the week. The Treasury bond auction held on the 13th of August saw a complete offering of 60 billion rupees being accepted with the 8-year instrument seeing a 78 basis point increase in yields to 13.25%. The Treasury bill auction for 130 billion rupees was also fully accepted with the 3-month and 6-month bill yields increasing 17 and 12 basis points to 9.39% and 9.68% respectively and the 12-month declining 3 basis points to 10.03%. that let's take a look at the rupee exchange rate for the day Kanchana Vijay Sekar says that he expects a reduction in power generation costs by at least 50% following the commencement of operations of the Soba Danavi power plant, which will generate power from liquefied natural gas. He made these comments while addressing an event in Colombo. A memorandum of understanding was signed to develop infrastructure for the storage, regasification and supply of liquefied natural gas for the Soba Adhanavi Combined Cycle Power Plant at Keravalapitiya. The agreement was signed between Sri Lanka's LTL Holdings Limited and India's Petronet LNG Limited 
under the patronage of the Minister of Power and Energy, Kanchana Vijay Sekara, and the Deputy High Commissioner of India and Sri Lanka, Dr. Satyanjal Pandey. Total installed power production, we understand in Sri Lanka is around 5,000 megawatt. Out of that, around 2,100 megawatt is on the fossil fuel, coal and the other oil based power plant. The remaining 58% is renewable and hydel. And we understand that for the renewable power, which is cyclic in nature and balancing the national gas grid, requires the natural gas based power plant. This phenomena is happening all across the world. And if you have a very large capacity of renewable power where the power factors are substantially lower than the conventional power generating unit. The natural gas based power, power plant is a best option for stabilizing the grid. So this is really a very good move for switching over to the natural gas fuel for already dual fuel power plant installed. Our joint efforts are aimed at fostering energy security for Sri Lanka and to decrease the cost of energy as a key economic enabler for development. Connecting Sri Lanka to emerging regional and global grids with India as a major transit point can also help bring investments to actualize Sri Lanka's vast green energy potential, generate additional revenue and make it a major energy export. PLL's Kochi LNG terminal service to Sri Lanka undoubtedly would provide unmatched benefits to Sri Lanka's LNG value chain. The establishment of LNG facilities at Kerala by the two companies and the supply of LNG from India's Kochi terminal will support Sri Lanka's energy needs but also contribute to the region's overall energy security through the diversification that it would bring. Now with this signing we hope that the 18 month timeline or the time frame is strictly adhered to and that we have the infrastructure and the supply ready at least by the beginning of 2026 so that our power plants are ready to generate power from LNG. That will significantly bring down the cost of energy. Right now what we spend on energy in terms of diesel powered power stations is about 106 or 110 rupees a unit. The next best option is HFO heavy fuel oil or naphtha power generation but which is also still expensive than the LNG power plants. So we hope when the power stations operate from LNG that we can bring down the cost by at least about 40 to 50 percent and give that advantage to the consumer and bring down the cost of energy in Sri Lanka. The final Randoli procession of the esteemed annual Candy Asala Perahara successfully concluded yesterday, bringing light and colour to the historic streets of Candy. The final Randoli procession, also known as the Grand Randoli procession of the Candy Asala Perahara festival, toured the streets of Candy, commencing festivities at the auspicious time of 6:57 p.m. yesterday. Tusker Indiraja of the Elephant Troop of the Sacred Temple of the Tooth Relic in Candy was vested with the honour of carrying the sacred casket. President Ranan Vikramasinghe, accompanied by First Lady Professor Maitri Vikramasinghe, were present together with diplomats to witness the mesmerizing final Randoli procession of the Candy Asal Berahara Festival. Following the successful completion of the annual Candy Asal Berahara, the water carting ceremony was held at the Gatamedia Kapana Tota during the early hours of today. Marking the end of this year's Candy Asala Perahara Festival, a memorandum was handed over to President Vikramasinghe at the President's house in Kandy. And with that, we wrap up tonight's edition of First at Nine. Thank you for joining us and have a good night. and information you can trust 24 hours a day. Visit adhaderna.lk.